it's good to know where you guys are from. I'm from the Netherlands, um, and uh, the first thing that I want to share with you guys about personal branding is that you should always update your profile photo, uh, because this one uh, is quite old. I've, my hair is a little bit longer, uh, but uh, at least I was wearing a suit, so uh, I'm still happy that they, uh, they picked this photo. Um, I want to start with a little story about somebody that I met in 2013. So this is Megan. Uh, by the time she was around 23 years old, and uh, I was in France in a, like a big creative uh, advertising festival. And I just bumped into her on the streets and we started talking. And I was just curious to learn like, hey, what do you do and where you're from? And she mentioned that she, was, uh, she quit her job to start a project called 52 Cups of Coffee. And basically the idea was she was just curious to learn uh, stories of people. So the idea was that every week she would drink one cup of coffee with an inspiring person and just share on like her blog and social media uh, what she learned from those people. And she was around like halfway of her trip and she talked to, you know, she started in her own city. Uh, she's from the US, but slowly she began to travel to different countries. And she managed to talk to people like Steve Wozniak, so, you know, the co-founder of Apple, uh, Seth Godin, like uh, some presidents of different countries. And for her, like, once you mentioned it, for me, that was like the, the seed was, plant was planted, like, wow, you can really do something with your creativity and combine it with traveling, uh, just as like a personal project. I'll get back to this uh, a little bit later. So we'll travel back in time a little bit. So this was in 2000. 13, uh, I used to work in advertising, so I studied communication, and uh, this was basically my route to work every single day. So every day I put on my raincoat, because usually uh, it's raining in the Netherlands, um, biking to work, it's like 2.3 kilometers, every day the same direction, the same route, went to the office, the same people, uh, basically everything was the same. And I don't know if you guys have seen The Matrix, but for me it felt like I was really kind of stuck in the rat race or stuck in routine. And at, the, at one day, like when it was raining uh, a lot, I was on my bicycle and I was kind of zooming out and I saw myself biking this way to work. Um, the same if you maybe feel if you're going to the same work now. And I thought like, you know, is this it, you know? Is this life? Is this going to be the same routine for the rest of my life? And then I really felt like I, I, should, I should change this. Like I feel that there's way more to explore. Um, so I made quite a bold decision. Uh, I decided to quit my job, uh, leave my apartment and travel the world. But um, I, I know that I'm from a privileged country, but my parents never spoiled me. So I always had to figure out everything and I earned like every uh, dollar always from my own uh, hard work. And <laughs> which was not uh, a lot of money, but I figured out uh, after booking the tickets that I didn't have enough money to go all the way, which was not uh, the smartest move, of course. But um, as because I'm always thinking creative, I was thinking like, hey, let's, let's try to find a solution for this. Like, I don't really care about the money part, but I just want to have the experience. So then I thought, hey, what if I just trade the skills that I already have, uh, not for money, but for room and board at companies abroad. So I created this idea called uh, the Backpacker Intern. And basically, uh, I made it simple enough to explain it in one tweet uh, in the time that it was still 144 characters. I think now it's like double. Uh, but still, like, also, if you have a cool idea that you're working on, try to craft it into uh, 140 characters, because that's a good test to see if it's a simple idea. So basically, I, I created this idea, and I wrote down like uh, the name of the project on a piece of cardboard. Uh, first of all, because it was just cheap and easy to make. Second, because I'm not a designer. So I thought, hey, I can get away with this without being a good designer. And then I thought, yeah, but this is cool. But I have to find a way that people will actually know about this project, right? So, so how do you do that? How can you let the whole world know what you're doing? Um, so I created this video and I posted it on my uh, uh, Facebook channel my personal one, and I'll explain later what happened, but this is the video, if the sound works. Good test now. Hello world. Meet Mark van der Heijden. This is his life. He lives in Amsterdam, loves to play tennis, have a beer with his mates, and dance until the sun comes up. But most of the time, he works as a creative copywriter at advertising agencies. 
He's made work for brands like KLM, Dance for Life, TNT Express, Doctors Without Borders, Audi and many more. But for him, the Netherlands is just, you know, the Netherlands. And Mark wants more. So, he quit his job and left his apartment. Starting an adventure in January 2014 to travel the world as the Backpacker Intern. Helping out agencies, brands and charities. Mark can originate concepts, craft copy, take photographs, devise strategies, give presentations and play a mean game of ping pong. But he doesn't want to get paid. He just wants to trade. A day of his work for food and a place to sleep. He hopes to meet you soon. Follow his adventures and get in touch at thebackpackerintern.com. So basically, uh, I created this video and I launched it, or launched it, I put it on my personal Facebook page and, uh, you know, my friends liked it, my mom liked it, I think your friends and your parents always like everything you do, even if it's bad. So I didn't know if it was going to work or not. Um, and I also didn't really care. So I just thought, hey, you know what, I'm just going to post it and I'm going to go to my first destination, uh, which was uh, Bangkok in uh, Thailand. Anyone has been to Bangkok, Thailand, some people? Nice. Uh, now, as you guys know, it's uh, quite an uh, intense city. A lot of people live there. And I was on my way, you know, for the first time traveling alone, uh, you know, with my backpack, way too much stuff. You know, they say travel light, you don't listen, so you bring like something for 5,000 years. Um, and I, you know, I arrived uh, at the airport, but when I was in the air, this idea got picked up by global media. And I had no idea, but when I landed, uh, my project was suddenly on, you know, Adweek, MTV, TEDx, and all those things. And, and in that first week, I received more than 750 job offers from all over the world. Uh, probably also in a few countries where you guys are from. And I was like, what's, what's going on? Like, I just, I, I'm just here kind of doing a small project, but now it, from day one, it totally flipped the script. And I was also like, yeah, now I actually have to do a lot of work, uh, but at least, you know, it's a big opportunity. Um, so uh, what happened next was, uh, you know, all those job offers, here are a few of my uh, favorites. Wait, this was one from India, actually, uh, which was, uh, <laughs> be our backpacker intern, get tandoori chicken in return. It's quite tempting, of course. Um, internship proposition in Transylvania with vampires. And do you want to be the gardener in Thai, in, in Thailand? Now, of course, uh, you can imagine uh, which uh, huge career leap uh, I made after uh, all these offers. Um, and, you know, so if anyone wants to know anything about gardening in Thailand, you know, I'm your man. I can connect you to some people there. Um, but jokes aside, you know, uh, in the end, um, uh, I managed to work at 32 companies in 27 countries on all seven continents. Um, again, I was not getting paid in money, but I was just trading my skills for, you know, flights, accommodation, food, and a lot of weird stuff. And for me, it was so cool to, um, to experience the world and basically also see, like, uh, how people work on all these different continents. Uh, I, hadn't, I haven't been to Kazakhstan before, so I'm, I'm again, like, learning a lot from you guys already. Um, like one of the biggest things I've learned here is how hospitable you are, like everybody's just welcoming. Every time I wanted to pay for food, no, 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 it's okay, like, yeah, but then I also want to, you know. But, um, and that also comes back to the whole nomadic uh, history of, uh, of Kazakhstan, which I think is super, uh, um, super interesting, especially now because we're living in this world where you have digital nomads, uh, but without you guys that would never be possible, so thank you for that as well. Um, but besides uh, uh, gaining a lot of work experience, I also you know, got to know all these different cultures, uh, hanging out in the favelas in Rio until you know, with, with millionaires in Vegas and Nobel Prize winner Malala um, and everything in between. And then I was sort of reflecting like, hey, so wh why did this work? You know, why was this an idea that, that actually got picked up? And, and why did it uh, keep going? And then I thought back, like, hey, I just wrote it down on, like, a piece of cardboard. It wasn't, it wasn't anything special. Um, but that actually made it special. So I, I kept it super simple, and I made it so 
uh, recognizable for people that if they see this sign, they know it's the same project. Um, so that's the first advice that I uh, would like to give you guys. So if you start something for yourself or if you think about your, your personal brand on social media or uh, you know, if you want to apply for a job or an internship, uh, keep it simple. Has anyone been to Seattle before? One, two, a uh, few people, nice. Um, so in Seattle, I worked at this uh, company called the Adventure Film School. And basically, uh, it's a school that teaches people how to film during extreme conditions. Uh, so they help you, if they teach you how to film with bungee jumping or uh, mountain climbing or all those kind of things. Um, and uh, I, I thought, yeah, that's cool, I, I would like to do that. And they asked me to come up with an idea to find a new intern for this company. So I was brainstorming and coming up with ideas. And then the idea that I came up with was uh, called Badass Intern. And basically the idea was that uh, somebody would uh, jump out of an airplane and during the fall explain how you can get an internship at this company. Um, so I pitched the idea to the, the boss of the company and she uh, was like, yeah, okay, it's cool. And I said, no, no, like, I'm serious. Like, we're going to do this. And I said, but I'm going to do this. Like, I'm going to jump out of an airplane and scream the job description. And uh, she didn't really believe it. And then I said, okay, you know what? Just tell me how many views you want. And then if we reach that, uh, you know, you can pay me back. I'll just pay for the, for the whole skydive thing. I'm going to do it because I believe in this idea and nothing's going to stop me. And she was like, oh, okay, this guy's so crazy. Let's, let's just do it. Um, so we basically, uh, yeah, 10 minutes later, we were in the car driving towards this uh, skydive center in, uh, in Seattle. And, um, and I was like, yeah, but, you know, I, I have to look badass. I cannot just look like this. So we went to like a thrift shop and for $5, I bought uh, a suit and like a leopard tie. I thought it was quite a nice detail. Um, and then we went to the skydive center where all these people were, were doing a serious skydive. I was wearing this suit. They were all like, what is this guy doing? And then you sign this thing, like if you die, then you die, but not that anyone cares then. Um, so yeah, I, I'm in the air. And then we're like, how is it gonna work with the microphone? I don't know, let's just use duct tape, tape it inside the thing. Is it gonna work? Like I didn't even Google if it's like physically possible with sound and stuff, we just went for it. <laughs> so imagine uh, you're uh, suddenly at 16,000 feet, like I'm literally you know, hanging out of the airplane, the door goes open. And I only had to remember like three sentences, which was um, uh, three months, epic adventures, and learn how to film and edit. And then if I landed, I would say the rest and they would use it. <laughs> so imagine like 16,000 feet, like the wind is going like, and like all this pressure, like me with my big mouth, like saying like, I'm gonna do this. Um, and it, I already did one skydive, this was my second one, but still like my feet were hanging out and then was like, here was a the camera, there was a guy next to me, with a camera on his head who was going to film the whole thing. And I, it was so much pressure and I had to remember the text and I didn't know if it was going to work. <laughs> so, you know, uh, so I jump out. This is me and this is, that's the other camera guy on the left there. So in the beginning you like tumble around like, like crazy. Who of you did a skydive? Can I see some hands of people? Nobody. Oh, now uh, you'll, uh, I won't say, I don't, I want to say recommend it, but I also don't want you to die. Make your own decision, but it's fucking awesome. Um, so we uh, basically, uh, I'm, I'm tumbling down and um, at some point <coughs> they tap your arms that you have to hold up your hands to be steady. And that was also my cue to basically uh, say the text. <laughs> so uh, this is the, the point of view from the camera guy. So he's like looking at me and I'm like, oh, this is my moment. So I'm like standing there and I'm like, three months, three months, three months. <laughs> I couldn't go further than three months. Like it was just too much, too much stuff going on. And I, I didn't know, like I was laughing at myself that it didn't work. <laughs> and uh, I actually have the audio file. I hope it works. I'm going to try. It's pretty uh, embarrassing actually. That works. Yeah. <laughs> like trying, I don't even know what I'm saying. Like I think the parachute will open soon also. Yeah, so that was, uh, that was fun. And basically, uh, yeah, <laughs> it didn't work out as you already uh, noticed a little bit. 
But uh, what I did learn from it um, is that you know I had the confidence. Uh, I had the confidence that, that this would work out, and I just decided to just do it, even though it might not work out. And and afterwards, also you know the director of the company, she also didn't really care. She just thought it was so cool that I pushed through and I didn't have to pay back anything. And she was just uh, proud that that you dare to take the leap, you know, to take a step. Um, so also for yourself, think about stuff if you're. You know, feeling insecure about something, or you know, it's always difficult to take the first step. But maybe just try to make that step smaller, and then you learn like by doing it more that actually gives a really good feeling, and then you get the hang of it, right? Um, because I also know the feeling of getting stuck with ideas, and then it's one year later, and then what did you do? Yeah, nothing. And yeah, why? Because you're only thinking. Uh, so just get into action and, and you know, take that leap. Um, so, I don't know if you know this TV show, but there is a national TV show in Slovakia and they uh, yeah, sent me an email, or actually 14 emails, asking if I wanted to come to <laughs> their uh, morning show. But I was like, yeah, what am I going to do in Slovakia? Like, I don't know, um, I was on the other side of the world, but I thought, okay, this guy really wants it, so I'll just do it. But then I said to him, like, okay, if, if you pay for my flight, uh, I will come to the show. And then in the show, I will, uh, it's like live television for a few million people watching. Uh, I will explain what I'm doing. And then the first company that calls to the show, I will do an internship there. And I was like, okay, deal, let's do it. <laughs> so I was like, flew at three o'clock at night, arrived at five in the morning and six o'clock, I had to go to this morning show. And uh, this is a little uh, snippet from the, from the show. And the thing was that every time when I said something, they translated it in uh, Slovak and which I didn't understand. <laughs> so I didn't really know what they were saying and it's again like pretty awkward what I'm going to show now. Surfo, yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, what do you plan to do in Slovakia? Have you already already job in Slovakia? Manšo? No, nothing. So uh, this is actually, uh, I thought it was a good moment to ask mm -hmm. the people like if you have a cool agency or brand or charity then I could help you out because Takže pokiaľ máte, uh, pokiaľ máte nejakú nadáciu, pokiaľ máte svoju agentúru a chcete, aby Mark, ktorý má skúsenosti naozaj s mnohými uh, brandami známymi na Slovensku, tak sa mu skúste ozvať uh, a môžete... Hey, you see me looking like, uh, I don't know what's going on, um, which, which was true. Um, but, uh, so how many job offers do you think I got like after this, this TV show? Can this... Ten. Ten? Five hundred? Wow, <laughs> thank you for your trust. Uh, anyone else? Uh, 30. 30? Who said zero? <laughs> 30? Ah, you're right. It was zero. <laughs> so nobody understood what I was doing. Um, so basically what happened is that I, I failed on national TV with millions and millions of people watching who totally had no idea what I was doing and why I was asking them for this. Um, but again, this is something that uh, I also thought that some, you can be ashamed of it or you can actually just step over it and think like, hey, but this was also a really cool experience uh, and it actually doesn't really matter, right? So um, yeah, what, the, the third lesson is like feel, um, feel free to fail um, because again, it's difficult, but the more you fail, the better it will feel and then you think like, it doesn't matter, you know, I'm just going to try something new try to get this internship or try a new course in school or maybe hang out with uh, a friend that I haven't ever talked to, just try it out, you know, it's okay. If it doesn't work out, you just move to another direction. Um, but if you only stay in your own path, then not a lot of things will change. Um, does anyone know Nal Rogers? Have you heard about him? Some people? One? Uh, can you explain who it is? Do you know who it is? You raised your hand, right? Yeah. Oh, I'll explain it. Maybe it's better with the microphone. <laughs> uh, but basically, y you, you might not know him, but you know almost all of his music uh, because he worked, for example, with uh, Daft Punk and Pharrell Williams. They made uh, the song Get Lucky. Uh, he also works with, um, that's maybe older, but uh, Madonna, uh, Duran Duran, Bon Jovi. Uh, he, works, he worked with Avicii as well. Um, and I was invited to give a presentation at TEDx in New York and that was my first time public speaking ever. Uh, <laughs> it was on Broadway in New York City and Nile Rogers was the host of the event. But also other speakers were from like Q-Tip from uh, the Wu-Tang Clan and the Jizza, oh, sorry, the Jizza from the Wu-Tang Clan and uh, uh, Q-Tip. And 
like it was a live stream with 120 people from uh, sorry it was a live stream on MTV uh, broadcasted to 120 countries uh, live and I was like my first time like super nervous but still you know I just went for it and then after my talk I was so happy that I could finally sit down back in the audience and then Niall said like hey uh, you, you crazy tall Dutch guy uh, before you leave uh, I want to offer you an internship at my studio in New York and I walked back on stage and I gave him like a big high five and three months later I was in the studio uh, with uh, Avicii who was uh, by that moment still uh, alive uh, and he was making a track together with this guy who was sitting in the back of the studio together with Niall so we walk in the studio and I heard this guy like playing guitar and I was like wow sounds pretty good like who is this and then uh, it was Chris Martin from uh, Coldplay <laughs> so suddenly I was like on sitting on a bench in the studio with uh, Avicii was sitting next to me and then Chris Martin in front of me and Nile Rogers and together they were like creating a track and I was I just like had to film myself to believe it like is this real <laughs> um, and I'm not sure if the track will still come out because of course uh, uh, unfortunately uh, uh, he passed away um, but what, what I did learn from it is even though I was scared to uh, do that uh, presentation uh, on stage for the first time in my life um, it actually brought me to places you know and, and, and still now like because of uh, a lot of other talks I did and the people I met um, I'm now able to share my story here and hopefully um, this will also inspire you guys to, to stand up more and, and start to learn how to uh, tell and, and share your story and I know the feeling that it's like super scary to, to do it and I also never thought I would be able to do it for like a lot of people but still the more you practice it and the more you start doing it, the better it will get. Are you guys still on board? Everybody's okay. Can I see my hands if you're still good? Is it still interesting? Yeah. Okay, cool. Otherwise, you can just go, it's fine. But there's still much more to come. Oh, yeah, and also, like, at the end, I have a small, like, Q&A. And the best question will get uh, strobe waffles, which is uh, an amazing Dutch treat. Yeah. So that's another reason to stay here if you want. Has anyone of you guys ever hitchhiked before? Can you see some hands? <coughs> nice. That's good. A few people. Again, uh, I'm not recommending it. I'm just telling a story of uh, how I did it. Um, I was traveling for, I think, one and a half year. And, and I think if you travel more, you kind of want to push yourself to try out some things you never did before. You gain a little bit more confidence. Um, and so I thought, yeah. I'm in South America, I actually really want to hitchhike, I never did it, like it's super scary, but at the same time, like why not try it? Um, but I'm somebody, I am somebody who always likes to do a lot of research, like figure out, you know, what's going on, um, to just have more knowledge in when you start doing something. Um, it's almost like uh, studying again. <laughs> so what I did, I, I, there's this website called, um, I don't know, it's something like Hitchipedia, or, or it's like Wikipedia for hitchhiking. <laughs> and I was like reading all the stories like okay because they figured out all the research on how you can improve your chances to get picked up uh, while hitchhiking um, so I listened to all the tips so they said okay you need to if you have a bag put it like next to you and then you're standing there so that they can don't put it on your back because they think you're in a hurry and it feels like danger um, like stand next to like a roundabout or a place that has only the direction where you have to go uh, make a sign, cardboard sign, I was pretty good at that already. Um, write down like not the furthest destination but just like a big one kind of on the road and then add like something funny like a smiley or something positive um, and don't wear sunglasses but just like make sure that people look at you in the eye or try to and, um, and smile like the whole time. You cannot be stressed because it feels like danger, right? <laughs> and they had all, the, all these percentages that it would help you to improve to get picked up. So I did like, you know, a master thesis uh, hitchhiking and then, uh, uh, you know, went on the road like, okay, I'm going to do this, put on my, my backpack and my stuff, standing on the corner of the road. <laughs> and uh, yeah, oh, yeah, and also you need to use your thumb, of course, like this. So I'm like standing with the sign, my back here. I think there's still a photo of my setup. This is sunglasses, but this was later on. I was a little bit more skilled. Uh, but uh, at, a, at the sign, my back was in front of me, like my, uh, my, my thumb was like this. And then, uh, yeah, the first car came, like pretty nervous, like, whoa, what's going on? Uh, and the first car came and he just passed. I'm like, yeah, I was expecting this. And like the second car, 
and he stopped. I was like, oh, this is easy. <laughs> but then I thought, yeah, is it actually easy or is this like a serial killer? I don't know. <laughs> um, and then I just, uh, the car stopped. And this is the, a video of the, the first guy that I met with the first time in my life hitchhiking. So after two minutes, he stopped. Hola. Hola. My name is Joaquin. I'm from Uruguay. <laughs> y mucho gusto para todos. <laughs> yeah. This is my first hitchhike ever. <laughs> and I was waiting uh, like 20 seconds. And then my new friend over here, he picked me up. And he has friends from the Netherlands as well. And he has a cocktail bar. <laughs> so that's perfect. And now we're heading to... Roja? We are going to Rocha. Rocha, see. Yes. Roja. 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 Rocha. <laughs> and then I'm gonna find a new hitchhike to Maldonado. Adios, amigos. So this was a good story. I also have a lot of other stories. I'm not gonna share all of them. <laughs> but, uh, but in total, um, I think I... Um, hitchhiked in like five countries and it's pretty addictive because it's like such a crazy adventure um, but kind of the lesson I got from from doing this uh, you know I, I did a lot of research like I said I figured out a lot of things about hitchhiking um, so that gave me a lot of confidence to actually do it instead of that you hear from people like oh, I should do it and then you go there you're kind of unprepared and this metaphor is not just for hitchhiking it's basically for a lot of things you can do in your life like the, the more you know about your audience, so that's why I'm saying always put your audience first, uh, the better the result will be for everyone. So for yourself, for the audience obviously, um, but also people that you will inspire by the fact that you know what you're talking about. So um, <clears throat> with my personal project, like in the end, um, I started with, with the idea that I would do it for six months, but it became a, a two-year adventure where I worked at 32 companies in 27 countries on all seven continents. So this picture was actually taken on Antarctica. Uh, as you see, I had some uh, penguins as colleagues. Um, but I also you know, worked at Red Bull headquarters in Austria. I worked at UNICEF New Zealand. I worked at Ogilvy in Cape Town and the favelas in Rio and everything in between. And what I realized is like, uh, that I was not alone, but there's a whole generation uh, craving for adventure. Like people want to explore the world and, and see more of, of just the place where they're from. Um, and you know, that's why I also uh, spent some time in uh, Bali. Has anyone been to Bali, Indonesia? You can see some hands, a few people. Um, yeah, so as you know, it's a, a really nice place to, uh, to work from. The weather is usually pretty good. And that's where I discovered this whole world of um, digital nomads, di digital Kazakhstanis, maybe we should name it like that actually. <laughs> uh, and they were like basically people just working in their swimming pants uh, on laptops. And they were working for like million dollar companies or even owning those companies. And like my mind was blown like, whoa, you can actually, it doesn't matter where you're working, right? Um, especially in the time we live in now, that's, that's really changing. Um, a lot of companies are more remote friendly, like moving towards that you don't have to be inside a cubicle or inside an office. Um, but what if you can actually just choose the place where you want to work, where you get uh, become the most happiest version of yourself or where you can actually uh, explore places in the world that you've never been before. Um, so there's always this thing that people say, yeah, the, the best talent is in uh, Silicon Valley. Well. I don't think the best talent is in Silicon Valley. I think the best talent is in Silicon Valley. <laughs> but also Silicon Delhi, and I actually discovered a new one, which is quite cool, which you probably know of, which is uh, Silicon Almaty. Um, I think that there are a lot of opportunities here also for, uh, for people from abroad, and I'll make sure that I will spread the word uh, about your uh, beautiful country and people, uh, that more people should come here and explore your country and, and on the other side, I think you guys uh, should also uh, go out there and, uh, and explore the world. You know, uh, that's also in your nature to be nomads. Just add digital and you can see more of the world. Um, but always make sure that you come back and, and, and spread the knowledge with your uh, local communities and also the students that will come after you guys. Um, this is a, an amazing photo of uh, uh, how it is if you think you can launch a company for the first time in your life. <laughs> so. Uh, because I got so many emails from people that wanted to combine work and travel, like, hey, can you help? 
um, and and you know how I discovered this whole world of digital nomads. I wanted to help more people do that. So I started a company, and this was a photo which is taken, I think, two hours before the launch of our uh, platform. And it was after a week of only having two hours of sleep every night, just like keep on working. Um, but one day after this photo was taken, we were on the on the national news uh, for uh, for launching this company, which was really cool. Um, and basically, the company is called Wonderbrief, and Wonderbrief uh, comes from wanderlust, so the urge to travel, and brief is temporary but also assignment. And basically, we're a platform that makes the digital nomad life easy. So we help people um, to uh, work remotely uh, and use that freedom to travel the world. Is anybody already working remotely or like on a side project next to school or not yet? Yeah, a few people. All right. Um, I think most people are already working remotely. Like who, who checks their email at home? Can I see some hands? Or who checks their email on the weekend? Yeah, so you're working remotely, right? So it doesn't matter. Um, and that's a small example, but it's, it's this big thing that uh, a lot of companies are still in like old school structures and ways of working. And I want to like break open those, those barriers and make sure that they see the, the benefits of working remotely. Um, because I believe that's the only way how they can keep the talents, like also you guys, inside of their companies, instead of yeah, making them stay in a cubicle for uh, uh, a nine to five for the rest of their lives. Um, so basically what we do is we have a global community of um, people from uh, 100 countries. Pretty sure we also have some people from Kazakhstan. Uh, otherwise, uh, feel, free to, uh, feel free to join. Um, we have 3,200 members. And it's all organically, so we never paid for any advertising. So I think one part is like <coughs> to come back to like the personal branding. If you start sharing your story, that people uh, feel like, hey, I want to learn how you guys do this. And um, to give you an example of how uh, it works and what we do, like my office, uh, like I also used to work in an office for six or seven years, but then I quit with that personal project, and then I never came back to an office in my life because I really wanted to use the world as my office. And this is my office from the last uh, year. Wherever she goes, I go, we roll, we go. Flying over cities down to Rio, it's Rio. Love that I feel, oh, nothing lasts forever, but I'm down for the minute, so just chill. Wherever she goes, I go, we roll, we go. Flying over cities down to Rio, it's Rio. Love that I feel, oh, nothing lasts forever, but I'm down for the minute, so just chill. I just have to add Kazakhstan now to the, to the mix <laughs> for the next presentation. Um, yeah, so this is actually the, the sixth lesson uh, regarding, again, like the personal branding. Um, live your brand. Like I'm, uh, I'm doing this, uh, but I'm also like promoting it, right? So I know now what are the pain points, what are the struggles in how do you find a remote job or a remote project or how is it to go for the first time in your life to Kazakhstan or, or, or talk to people you never met before? What is safe for women to travel? Uh, how does it work with visas? How does it work with your taxes? Um, so by actually doing what you want to sell or what you want to promote, um, that will always level up your personal branding um, uh, on every aspect of what you're doing. So also like think about your personal social media if you want to use social media. Um, like think about how what you post will reflect in what you want to achieve. <clears throat> and again, that comes back to the main lesson, uh, live your brand. So besides uh, online uh, community and uh, events and meetups, we also organize real life meetups. So this was one uh, in Bali, where we uh, connected a lot of people with each other. This was actually in Iceland, a little bit smaller, but there were also only 320,000 people living there. <laughs> so we're still, uh, we're still growing that part of the community. Uh, this one was in Amsterdam. I think a few months ago and these are just like events that are free to attend free to come and it's basically just a really cool way to get to know you know digital nomads or people that want to become digital nomads and the cool thing about this meetup in Amsterdam is that because of this meetup I am here and that is because somebody who's sitting here in the corner Diana uh, she was at that Wonderbrief meetup in Amsterdam she works for uh, Keymap 
And we just started talking and she said like, yeah, yeah, we sometimes have speakers from abroad. And I said, oh, cool, yeah. I sometimes give talks, like, if you need any help, let me know. I was like, yeah, cool. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, we kind of like forgot about it a little bit. I didn't know that she was like hustling and, and getting stuff done with, with Balzan and Raushan. And, uh, and then they you know, connected with the Yesenov Foundation. And, but that was all happening without me knowing it. <laughs> so then like a few weeks ago, uh, she said like, uh, yeah, I fixed it. I said, fix what? Yeah, uh, we're, we got a grant from the university and we're bringing you over. I'm like, really? <laughs> like, so again, I'm like really thankful uh, that this worked out. Um, and I also connected this to a lesson, again, from personal branding point of view. Um, oh, sorry. And I wanted to say thank you for, uh, for the dinner. So she took us out for, uh, for dinner in uh, Almaty and uh, learned a lot about, uh, about the culture, great conversations. Uh, so, спасибо uh, for this. Um, but the lesson that I sort of pulled from this is um, like in whatever you do uh, in your life, uh, uh, like give all you got. And give all you got is, is twofold. Right? So from one side, it means uh, just, just give a lot of things, give things for free, organize like free meetups, uh, share cool things on, on your Instagram or on your personal blog or, or on other uh, social media. Just give a lot of things away. Um, even though maybe we're trained to always be selling or think about how much is this going to make me in money, uh, I believe that there are also different currencies. Like for me, uh, this is like priceless to just, to just be here and uh, meet all of you guys. Um, and the second part of give all you got is uh, if you do something, so if you commit to do something, whatever it is in your life, uh, go all in, like 200% or not, right? Because if you do something like 50%, like nobody's happy with that, right? You're, ne you're not happy, the people you're doing it for are not happy. So why even, why even step into it? And I think this could be a good way for yourself to kind of hold up a mirror sometimes or just write it down in your notebook, like journal about, is, is what I'm doing still giving me all the energy? You know, is it still, am I still doing what, what will be 200% or not? So give all you got. So remember the story that I shared in the beginning about Megan, like the girl that I met uh, in uh, 2011 in, uh, um, in France. So she did this project, 52 Cups of Coffee, where she traveled all over the world to talk with people. And when she finished her project, she uh, wrote a book about it, uh, published it, and uh, then she got invited to give a speech at TEDx, uh, which was cool. And I wanted to like share this story uh, of her today, and so I was like doing. I wanted to find a photo of her, uh, which you saw in the beginning. Uh, but um, I found out that she gave a TED talk, and she actually mentioned me in her talk. And you'll figure out why that was um, in a bit. This is Mark. I met Mark in the south of France. He's from the Netherlands, and he was at the Cannes Creative Film Festival uh, to, to compete in this competition. And because I met Mark, he led me to Cup 43, this dual cut between these two really creative women that won the competition that he was competing in. And I lost touch with those girls, but Mark and I stayed in touch via Facebook. Loose touch. And a couple months ago, I was in Asia, and I was on a train, and all of a sudden I hear, Megan? And I look over and I see Mark, who is on his own kind of nomadic experience right now. And I'm blown away at the serendipity of two people that meet in France just happen to be on the exact same train leaving the Bangkok, a Bangkok a Air airport in Asia. Yeah, so it's amazing, right? But like, I was reflecting on it back. And so actually, this was on the first day of my personal project. So basically, like, Seven years ago, she inspired me, like, hey, you can combine work and travel. And then I thought, oh, I'm going to do this thing, like the backpacker intern, also like travel and combine it. So she was my biggest source of inspiration. So when I arrived in Bangkok, um, super busy, you know, there were like 1,000 different trains you can take. And I take this one train and this one coupe going somewhere to the city, no idea which one it would be. And then I looked up, uh, just like dreaming a little bit, and looked up and I saw her sitting. I was like, no way. So. But at that moment, I just thought like, oh, it's cool, it's Megan. So this is like a photo when we met. That was like day one of my project, um, which is just weird that that happens. It's almost impossible if you would uh, think about it. Um, but what I wanted to share with you guys about this is that, you know, she inspired me to start my personal project. 
um, and then we both got invited to give a speech at TEDx. So I think from a personal branding point of view, if you, if you really just start something for yourself, I, I heard about some, I forgot the names that you sent them, like some um, uh, uh, Instagram sort of legends here in uh, Kazakhstan that they are opening up their own cafes and stuff like that and they just started with like fun accounts. Um, I think that's a great example. Like they just start doing something fun, something that they like. They get they build an audience and then start to like monetize it. Um, and I think if you guys also think about, hey, just think about what you could do next to what you do in school. Like what is something that you are really passionate about? And maybe you can start your own Instagram account, not from your from yourself, but just something next to it. Or organize an event or start doing public speaking or, or if you're an artist, like organize a concert. Like there's so many ways that you can make name besides being a, an awesome student at this uh, school. So next to the fact that she, that we both got invited to speak at uh, TEDx, she uh, landed a job at Airbnb. And one of the biggest reasons I think why she got that job was because they saw her project because she got in touch with so many people. She traveled all over the world, so she got to know a lot of uh, interesting cultures, um, which is super relevant for Airbnb. And if she uh, represents Airbnb uh, to a potential client, like she has a super cool story to tell. You know? So instead of saying, like, ah, I do marketing at Airbnb, she will say, yeah, I did a project, traveled all over the world, met people like Steve Wozniak uh, and uh, Seth Godin, uh, and now I started to work for Airbnb to apply what I've learned for this company. Um, and in my case, like it, it inspired me, uh, the personal project inspired me to start my own company. Um, so if there's one thing uh, I would like you to remember from, from my whole presentation, which is usually uh, what is the case, because there's a lot of information, um, it's really simple. It's just in whatever you do, think less and do more. <laughs>